In this final Fantasia, Telamon has found freedom from form and seems to employ all his elements of composition at once in his own personal style. It contains several contrasting shorter movements within two large sections. The grave and allegro sections alternate with similar repeated themes and contain a dolce section. The second section containing the presto is the part of the fantasia that shifts in key centers, alternating between minor and major keys. This is the only fantasia in which this obvious shift happens between major and minor keys. As you can see, the fantasia begins with a long held note. Make this note soulful. Decide on ornaments that complement the falling line of the phrase. The allegro sections are in three with the emphasis on the first beat. When you see large leaps, take care to maintain the tone on the upper notes as a melody to avoid accenting the accompanimental low notes. Choose your articulations wisely, remembering that you can slur neighboring notes and descending scale passages. The word dolce, signifying a sweeter mood in timbre, is used here to break up the two allegro sections. I take this section slightly slower and bring out the bass notes. I make a slight diminuendo in the ascending arpeggios to show that they are chords and not part of a melody. In this section, I find the melody to be hidden in the lower notes. The final bore is marked presto, and this tempo should emphasize the character of the piece, not show off the speed. There are many echoes to be utilized throughout the movement, and if you look at any phrase in the presto, you will see it restated in another key or octave. Your musical mind must show these differences in phrases and dynamics. In some of the editions of this movement, you will notice a del segno marking. Simply put, when the end of the maggiore or G major section has been reached, return to the top and finish the fantasia in G minor. In other editions, this section has been written out.